Is this thing on? Today's episode is brought to you by Boho Knits, unique designs for obsessive knitters, caked in hats, whimsical wet felted hats, handcrafted in Prince Edward County, and the Sock Diva, luxurious hand cranked socks made from the sumptuous Uncle Yarn. In the sea for me, bound with string inside a bottle of green. And if it cracks and to the bottom it sinks Well then maybe it wasn't meant for me Hello there! Welcome to Little Church Knits the Podcast. This is episode one. Um, my name is Cheryl and you may know me from my blog, littlechurchknits.com, which I've been authoring for about five years. Uh, and I was kind of thinking that this podcast might take the place of my weekly works in progress post, uh, where I talk about what's on my needles, what's new to me, what's interesting to me, and hopefully what's interesting for you too. We might do an interview or two with some other designers, maybe we'll talk to a dyer or two here or there. Um, Otherwise, I think we just have a whole lot of fun and uh, talk about how much we love to knit and what we love to knit and, um, and why. So I'm going to launch right in to a subject that's been kind of on the top of my mind for a while lately, um, and that is the shawl phenomenon. Has anyone else noticed this? Um, I just can't believe it. If you go to Hot Right Now in Ravelry, which is that little part of the pattern page where it tells what Ravelers are looking at, and you click on that, you'll, you'll see that 90% of those projects are shawls. Unbelievable. Um, and and just such an incredible canvas, such an incredible uh, vehicle for, for the creativity of knitters. Um, I, I attribute it in part because to the size of the project, shawls are small and portable. Um, they don't take, generally speaking, they don't take heavy needles or yarn. Um, they're quite encapsulated, so it means that um, really can go crazy with color if color is not something you do often. I really go crazy with the stitch patterns. Um, it can be inc- they can be incredibly intricate, um, but I I've noticed that they are they're a wonderful almost a a, a little a skills capsule if you will for knitters uh, where you really can showcase the best of what you're capable of, um, and I think those might be some of the things that intrigue knitters about shawls. I've noticed a little evolution of late. When I first started knitting shawls, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, that it was all about the lace. Everybody was knitting lace shawls. If it was worth knitting, it was made out of lace. That's changed a lot now. And I'm seeing some really beautiful shawls that are, um, that are, more, that are, more, that are less fussy. They're more, they're more solid. There's less open area. They are less shy about being warm, um, and they're less shy about their use of simple stitches like stockinette stitch, garter stitch, um, and and really basic knit curl combinations. I like that. I'm excited by that because I think it brings new knitters into knitting shawls sooner in their knitting lives, which I I think is pretty cool. one of the reasons why shawls are so much on my mind right now is I'm running a series on the um, on Ravelry called Free Pattern Friday. I don't, you may already be aware of that, but um, it's a series where I put out a free pattern, fresh new free pattern every week, every Friday. It's killing me. It's really, really hard. We'll talk about that later. But um, yes, yeah, so a fresh new free pattern every Friday. And because of the popularity of shawls on Ravelry, I thought, you know, maybe I'd do a shawl series. I'd do like a series of three or four shawl patterns that people could, um, could have for, for free. Um, and the first one, which was really, has really been popular, is Marcel. I really didn't expect to get that kind of uh, feedback that I've had from Marcel. Um, people tended to really, really like it. Um, I got an email from a lady in Japan the other day who said she was going to translate it into Japanese, which I thought was so cool. I'm really excited about that. She's going to make it into a kit and use it um, to teach a class, which I find just 
pretty fantastic. Um, so that was shawl number one in the free pattern series. Number two was the peekaboo beige shawl that came out last Friday, which people seem to really like too. It's a bit of a stretch for me in terms of color, but um, I really tended to like it. And I have two more shawls to follow that with. I don't want to tell too much. I don't want to spoil the surprise of the other two, but um, I think I can give a little hint. Uh, if not the next one, then certainly the fourth one in the series. I wanted to show you this incredible yarn that I've been working with. Um, I hope you can see it, but it, it is the most beautiful indigo color. Uh, this is from a company called Red Sock Blue Sock. They're based in Ottawa, Ontario, which is very close to where I am. And they are independent dyers. I'm not sure where they get the base from, but this particular one is a blend of blue face luster and silk. And I'm telling you, it's dynamite. I, I love the look of silk once it's knitted. I love seeing what other people do with it. But for some reason for me, I don't know if it's my tension or the way I hold my yarn, but it always tends to get kind of scuffy on the on the face when I'm using silk yarn. Um, and I, I, I've always been I always tend to be just a little bit disappointed about the way the finished product turns out because of the, um, the silk content. But I have to say that this particular yarn is not doing that. It's just creating this incredibly silky, drapey, luscious fabric, and I'm just, it's just divine to touch. Um, and I look forward to sitting down um, after I finish my desk work. Uh, knitting away on this absolutely beautiful thing that's going to become a shawl that will be free um, and I hope that I can use this as a sneak peek to tempt you uh, with, uh, with this lovely thing. It's kind of an unusual uh, shaping strategy that I have going on. It's different from the first two. The first two use a similar shaping strategy. Um, this one I have to tell you is completely different and number three which is the one that's going to be coming out this Friday is also a completely different strategy from um, Marcel and Peekaboo Bay. So you can look forward to learning a new uh, shaping strategy for shawls um, coming up. So that's something I'm, I'm really excited about and I just cannot get enough of this yarn. I love it. I bought a, I bought a, a purple skein from them too. Um, it's not the BFL silk. It's a different blend. Um, but I'm really looking forward to um, using that also. I find that really exciting. The color is beautiful in that one too. Uh, so that's Free Pattern Friday shawls coming up. Um, maybe part of the fascination for me with shawls right now is really loving using lighter weight yarns. And I, I like to say it's because the weather is warmer, um, but I also think it's because I just I'm just really enjoying it right now, and I'm, I'm enjoying using lighter weight yarns that are made out of winter fibers like merino um, and alpaca and things like that. I, um, when I was at the Twist show a couple of weeks ago in Toronto, I, I picked up some, some beautiful skeins of lighter weight yarn, um, namely this beautiful merino. 100% merino from Shell Ridge. Um, there was, I saw a shawl recently, and it, it was such a humble shawl, and I just fell completely in love with it. It was, it was bias knit, it was completely plain, and the entire thing was made with garter stitch. So it was just the, the squishiest, most delightfully warm, fluffy thing. And it was in humble colors. It was like, I had like a heathered gray, and a navy blue, and it wasn't, um, it was knit on a, on a needle that was quite commensurate to the weight of the fabric, so I, I'm pretty sure it was a lace weight. I think it was knit with maybe a, a 2.75 needle or something like that. Um, so it wasn't loose or open um, or, or drapey particularly in any way. Um, I, I believe it was a woolen spun yarn, so it was, it had that sort of airy lightness to it that I adore and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it and I really really wanted to make one for myself so when I saw the sample that Shell Ridge had 
this beautiful scarf sample. Perhaps I'll be able to find a picture of it online to include here. But it, it was the simplest thing. And Elizabeth and I said, oh, you went to Shulvich. Shul oh, you saw that scarf. And, and we had both seen the same scarf and, and both bought the 100% Merino lace weight because of being inspired by that beautiful scarf. But for me, I bought this to make um, that exact same shawl that I fell in love with. I know I'm probably not going to be able to get started until um, we get a little further on into summer or maybe even into fall before I'll be able to um, to start knitting on it. But these are the colors that I chose and it's soft and wonderful and I can't wait to get started. Um, along those lines, when I was at, I, I first saw this yarn at uh, Twist when we were there, not Twist, um, Knitter's Frolic when we were there a couple weeks ago. Um, and to me, this this uh, girl, her name is Kylie, she dyes these exquisite yarns, all using botanical dyes. Um, and for me, this was the highlight of the whole show. Agristol, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Agristol, Agristol, uh, I'm not sure. But um, sh these botanically dyed yarns are just exquisite. Um, and I bought a skein. I was lucky enough to find them on Pearl and Jay's Roving Yarn Company on the truck. Last weekend at the Tet Center, I was able to acquire this lovely skein, which I am dying to knit with. But I know I, I have to wait until I get a few more things off my needles. Speaking of things being off the needles, I am not a monogamous knitter. Not even a little bit. There is a new thing being added to the needles every, at least once a week I have a new, I add a new thing. But I'm also pretty good about being thorough and finishing them off too. Um, but anyway, get back to this lighter weight yarn. Something that came up when we were all on the bus and sitting around talking at uh, Knitter's Frolic a couple of weeks ago about how um, we kind of, I think Elizabeth brought it up, the designer Elizabeth McCartan brought it up, that um, we're both, we're, we, we're both feeling this um, need to knit scarves also, like not, not the woolly up around your neck kind of scarf, but the, but a, a, a lacy scarf or a lightweight scarf that you can just, I know I wear a lot of cotton ones in the summertime in bright colors that are just a loose weave, very open, that I, maybe they've got a, a floral pattern or some kind of patterning on them, but I find I wear them a, a lot during the summertime, and I thought, I wonder why I don't knit them, and apparently she had the same, same thought had occurred to her, and so my motive for buying some of these finer yarns are, um, is because I really want to do something I can wear up close to my neck, maybe um, for the summer months, I might focus more on linen and cotton, soft cottons, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, a scarf, a long, a long open work scarf, I think might fit my wardrobe a little better in the summertime than a shawl does. Shawls can be a little bit complicated to wrap and to wear um, and to style with whatever it is you're wearing. So we both, both Elizabeth and I agreed that. Uh, a scarf seems like a much easier way to wear uh, lacy fabric. We'll see. I'm I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to I'm going to give it a try with some lighter weight cotton and linen yarns, and then as we um, start moving forward into fall, I'm going to give it a go with some softer, woolier ones. So neckwear. I guess you know. I started out saying I want to talk about shawls. So really, what I wound up talking about was things that go around our necks to augment our wardrobe, um, and add a little color to all the, the white linen that we wear during the summertime. Um, and um, so I, you know, as much as I love shawls and I think they're great fun to knit, um, it doesn't end there. We can, we can also use beautiful flat unshaped fields of knitting to make lovely things to wear um, during the summer. So. There you go. That's what's going on on my needles. What else is on my needles? What else is in my needle basket here? Um, a few weeks ago, a nice lady from Yarn Canada sent me an email and said, if we send you, they had not been up to that point carrying 
um, the Patton's yarns, sock yarns, um, and had decided that they would like to, to do so. She asked me if I would review, if they sent me some yarn, if I would give a review to some of their Patton's sock yarns. So I chose a couple of shades that I knew would be that are, were new, at least new to me, I think new to their line too, some of these colorways, and um, that I would give it a, give it a go. Um, and so this is one of the colorways I chose. And I just, it's called Meadow Stripes. And I just love it. Aren't those colors great? It's just going to show you that, you know, for all the, all the, scratchy black, gray, and beige, brown, sock yarn that Patton's has made ever since we were a little itty bitty girl knitters and, and, and before that, when they were knitting for the war and knitting for the First World War probably, Patton's was making sock yarn. And, and look at how they've grown. Now we're, we're, we're into these like incredible, beautiful, bright, shiny um, sock yarns that are just gorgeous. So yes, I'm knitting up a sock. I'm going to make this a pattern um, for Ravelry um, called Picnic. Um, and I'll sure let you know when that is ready to uh, to download because I think it's I think it's just awesome and I think it will be an awesome summer sock project for people. So that's something that's on my needles. Let's just sip on my tea. I love how a lot of podcasters tell what they're drinking. I won't always be able to tell you what I'm drinking. I won't always want to make it public. Bad girl, bad New Orleanian. You have to give me a break. You can take the girl out of New Orleans, but you can't take New Orleans out of the girl. Um, today, we're sedate. We're having stash herbal lemon and ginger tea in my owl mug. This has a little owl inside it, too. Makes it a little inconvenient when stirring, but it's just nice to know he's there. Yum, yum, perfect. What else? Ah, oh, yes. Speaking of shawls, I've had this shawl on my needles for a while, and it was a little bit tricky for me. I bought this yarn initially uh, last summer from a little shop near the town where I live. Hello, Dad. Called um, Needle in the Haystack. It's run by a lovely lady named Lisa. And she introduced it to me as saying, saying that it was a, a gradient cotton, and, and it is very much a gradient cotton. This is gorgeous to work with. And I pulled it out at the beginning of spring, and I thought, I really want to give this a, a go, in keeping with what I was saying earlier about, you know, nice lightweight neckwear to wear in the summertime. And I thought, I'm going to knit a really open shawl. Maybe it'll be beaded at one end in some gorgeous summer colors. So I pulled it out and I started knitting and I thought, oh, I love this so much, I need another. So I went back and got another skein and I began knitting the two skeins against each other. This is a really cool product called Tahiti. It's by Schackenmeyer. Um, it is 100% cotton or 99% cotton? Yeah, 99% cotton, 1% poly or whatever that's worth. But it, the colors are just dynamite. It doesn't really show here because it, we've got a lot of backlighting going on, but they really are very shiny, bright, gorgeous, summery colors. And um, I can't wait to see where this goes. I'll keep you posted on that one. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So there's that. It's, I, I'm aiming for a long... A long triangular shawl, and that's that's sort of what we've got going. I've been increasing um, one stitch per side. It's been a long time. <laughs> I'm hoping to get a nice, generous. Um, you can see I start. It starts. The skein starts with a real greeny, um, kind of aqua color, and, and now we're working through into the periwinkle blues and so on. But it's a nice big triangle. I have, I'm not even halfway through. Not even close to halfway through either of the skeins, so I think it's going to grow to be a, actually a nice long wide scarf that I can just really throw around. Whatever, even a white T-shirt or something like that would be great with this. 
So yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that. It's very easy on your hands too because it's slippy, it's light, the needles are small, and um, something that I can sit and enjoy knitting on while I'm watching one of my favorite British uh, crime dramas. Is anybody watching Shadow and Dale? Oh my god, I love Shadow and Dale. And, and here's something interesting. In the first episode of Shetland we watched, what did I see? But Kate Davies' hat, that, that cute little hat called, I think it's called Puri Fleurs or something, that she designed maybe three or four years ago. It's really, really, really adorable. So, yeah, first thing I'm, I see is, like, um, Kate's beautiful Puri Flowers uh, hat, Tam in there. So, yeah, Shetland, oh, my gosh, loving it. I think we're on episode... Four now or something like that. Yes, very cool. I recommend it. Highly recommend it. Now, on another note, uh, what else is on the needles? Socks. Have you ever known me? Anybody who knows me knows that I am never without a pair of socks on the needles. This is no exception. Um, a very, very nice lady named Amy knits my Bay of Plenty socks. She tested my Bay of Plenty socks for me and um, we decided that the best yarn to use would be the, the dulcetly gorgeous um, Knit Picks Calcutta which is a merino and cashmere blend. You cannot see these but this is Laura, Sister Laura's favorite shade of a real Christmas green, hunter yellowy, Laura green. So that's what my sock project is at the moment. I believe I stole the needles out for something else, but yes, there they are. Beautiful, cabled, emerald green cashmere socks for my sister. Isn't that nice? That's the kind of lovely things that make my mind beautiful. You get to knit lovely things for people that you love. Um, and there, I mean, I could just go on and on. I've got a little pair of driving gloves here that I'm really hoping will make an appearance on Free Pattern Friday. It'll be really great in the fall, too. So, yeah, sneak peek there. Um, but there's a ton of stuff that I could go on and on and tell you about. Um, but in the interest of time, I should tell you what is coming up. Um, this has been a really busy, busy time, and Little Church Knits is branching out into all kinds of fun directions. Um, Friday, which is the 20th of May, will mark the launch of all of the e-commerce stuff. So the Etsy shop, the shop that's connected to the blog online will open. I've got a bunch of really great project bags, and um, I've got one that's shaped specifically for socks. This is the sock bag. It's just waiting on its little wrist strap. So you should see my, my house is just an incredible mess of sewing right now. But I thought this was a great size and shape for a sock project. It's, it's got some gap to it. It's got a little box corner. It's so hard to tell what you're going to be able to see here. I hope you all will bear with me. But yeah, it's got a nice bit of depth to it. And it's wider than it is long, which is nice because it means you can see everything inside. So that's the, that's the sock bag. Kind of excited about that. Then I've got, I have a bigger one, a midi bag, which is similar to the size I normally do. I've got these cute little um, large notions bags. You know, big enough to put a set of DPNs, uh, even a, a little itty bitty project, like a little project template. Isn't that cute? So yes, this is all over my house right now, this stuff. Um, so Friday marks the day that those things will launch in the shop and be available for purchase there as well as on Etsy. Um, and then of course we have number three in the four shawl series that'll be available um, on Friday early in the morning. This week we have the Big Island Wrapper. I, 
have that in the imagination room while with that one, but that's this week's shawl pattern. Three in the four series um, run of free shawl patterns, Big Island Jacka. So watch for that. So yes, lots of busy, busy stuff going on um, for Little Church Knits. We're also taking sponsors now. I'm going to be, um, you'll, you're going to see sponsors ads in the sidebar of the blog. And uh, I have three wonderful sponsors, which I told you a little bit about in the beginning. Um, and there'll be links in the show notes to them as well. Um, and those spots will be available to purchase at the end of this month. So that'll be mid-June. It'll be available to, to purchase for sponsorship. So yeah, lots and lots going on. Um, I think for now, I'm going to leave it there and say this was an incredibly fun afternoon. And I hope that you found it so as well. Um, I hope you'll come back and visit. I hope you'll come back and check out Free Pattern Friday. And get free pat fresh new free pattern every Friday. Um, and that you'll stop back in and see me again some Wednesday afternoon. Maybe next week. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye. Been lying here for quite some time